Ah, the 1980s. The decade that said if you weren't earning enough, spending enough, and doing enough of the nose candy, then you were doing it all wrong. It brought us such great things as mullets, slap bracelets, and an unwavering fear of Satanists, taking over and corrupting our youth into dedication to Satan, the memories. While the satanic panic was a pretty ridiculous phase in hindsight, and really at the time as well if you were lucky enough to grow up during the decade, it was a wave that seemed almost unstoppable at the time. Rampant claims of daycare facilities being used as a satanic assembly line to perform ritualistic abuse and sacrifice caused a mass hysteria that ended up being without any evidence. The fervor eventually died down, but we still see random waves to this day. What a wacky world we live in. One thing Hollywood is not above is using the current climate of fear to put out films to tap into the zeitgeist and hopefully convince people to come out to the local multiplex eat some popcorn while indulging their fears for an hour and a half. The 1980s were rife with movies that dealt with Satanists. While the panic was a ridiculous exercise in creating fears for no reason, it did lend to a few great horror films. Let's look at one now on the best horror films you never saw. got an abundance of movies dealing with the evil Satanists, but one that seemed to get overlooked was the Martin Sheen-led film, The Believers. Made in 1987, Sheen stars as a father and husband who just lost his wife in a Rube Goldberg-esque situation. While he is out for a run, his wife is getting their son breakfast and doing a few things around the kitchen. We see that the coffee pot seems to be leaking. After Sheen returns, he accidentally knocks a carton of milk over. When he and his wife go to clean it up, I often wondered to myself, why is everyone just stepping in the milk in their bare feet? Well, I would find out after the wife shoes him off to take a shower, she starts to clean it up, but her son tells her something is wrong with the coffee pot. As she stands in the puddle of milk to turn off the now smoking coffee maker, she is zapped with an electrical charge that freezes her in place. Sadly, she does not make it. After a location change, we learn that Sheen is moving he and his son to New York City. New York City! It seems obvious that they are pretty well off with the size of the house they are moving into, and of course the appearance of a maid. And I guess after your wife dies after cleaning up spilled milk and a broken coffee machine, you take no chances. Sheen starts up his therapy practice specializing in talking to police officers. Pretty quickly, he gets pulled up in to help a case after young Jimmy Smits gets caught up undercover dealing with a group that seems very involved with Santeria. Now let's jump into what Santeria actually is, and I'll say up front that I'll probably get some of this wrong, so look it up on your own if you're curious, or just look in the comment section below since this is the internet, and people are always looking to make a big deal about correcting you when you say something wrong. Ready? So my trusty friend Wikipedia says that Santeria started as an Afro-Cuban religion that grew out of a few different religions from slaves being brought through the Caribbean. After the Spanish conquered the island of Cuba, the only legal acceptable religion that could be practiced was Roman Catholicism. It was mixed with the Yoruba religion and spiritism. Elements from all of them were mixed together, and after the Cuban War for Independence, freedom of religion was given to the people, but Santeria was still looked down upon by some of the more mainstream religions and referred to as witchcraft. So, practitioners of Santeria believe that if you can pray to the Oricha saints, they will answer your requests with sacrifices or offerings. These Oricha then get the attention of the Oladumare, who after creating humanity got bored of their affairs and don't answer to them anymore. The bigger the offering, the more likely they are to answer your requests. This is very slimmed down and simple explanation of Santeria. For the purpose of this movie, that pretty much covers what you need to know. With any spiritual situation, it's way more complex and diverse than you would think. If you want to know more, visit your local library. Here's some other books that you might like, but you don't have to take my word for it. The Lieutenant, played by Robert Loggia, Whoa, Robert Loggia, needs Sheen's help finding Smits, and what follows is a trip into mutilated bodies, satanic sacrifices, and a sweaty Jimmy Smits in a diner. This movie has everything. 
Before long, Sheen is fully embroiled with the satanic group and is trying to gain fortune and power. He not only has to physically worry about people trying to harm him, but also avoid any sort of curse or spell cast upon him and his family. Since it's a horror movie, you can guess that he's not very successful in that regard. While there may be other more successful movies in this specific subgenre, there is a lot to like in The Believers. The cast is pretty spectacular. Martin Sheen gives a top-notch performance as usual. He goes from being a guy who thinks some of his Santeria stuff is a little hokey to being a full-on believer by the end of the film. His character goes through a roller coaster on this film's journey, losing a wife, being sad for a son, falling back in love, and getting tangled up in a cult that wants to sacrifice children for power and glory. That old actor chestnut that every performer longs for. Helen Shaver plays the next door landlord and new love interest. We believe her as an independent New York woman of the time. She does find herself attracted to Sheen, but isn't beholden to his will throughout the entire movie. If Sheen had told her he wasn't interested, it'd be easy to imagine she would just be off doing her own thing without a second thought. But since they are involved, she does her own thing, investigating during the film, and isn't stuck just being by Sheen's side the whole time. She has her own stakes in the film and fights back as best she can. We've mentioned that a young Jimmy Smith plays Officer Lopez, and his performance is so completely wrought with paranoia and fear that it permeates through the screen. You can see that his character is terrified, and his anger at the fact that no one around him seems to understand or even believe him, it's palpable. Fantastic performance. Then there's Richard Masser. He plays Sheen's best friend and lawyer in the film. His charm is fantastic, and while he doesn't have a ton to do, he uses every second to make you wish you had friends like him. When you go to your friend and you say, Satanists are trying to kill me, not many people will say, you sound crazy, but then grab a gun and ask where we're going to try to solve this. It's a fun performance and it's great seeing someone be able to be happy and fun in this sort of serious film. The special effects in the film are also really spectacular. There is lots of blood and torn up flesh in the movie as you'd expect for a film about satanic sacrifices. Those all look great, but some of the more surreal moments are done really great as well. One scene involves the old folktale about a woman that wakes up with a bump on her face and she later finds out it's an egg sack full of baby spiders. They do a similar idea in this film, though at one sequence a character ends up with what looks like a pimple on the side of her face, only for it to grow larger and grosser looking after a few days. Finally, it ends up pulsating and bursting. Out crawls a few spiders, and as I have a horrible case of arachnophobia, this scene had me covering my eyes, wishing it would all go away. It was my worst fear realized on film. And these aren't even just small baby spiders, but ones that seem too big to just being born. Even worse, I knew this was all done practically, so the actress actually had these crawling all over her face as she's screaming. Thankfully, none went in her mouth, or I might have passed out. We find out pretty quickly that people that really seem to be into this cult are white, wealthy people. The opening of the movie shows a flashback to a young man giving up his son so he could be sacrificed for wealth and power. Talk about voodoo economics. Anyone? Something D-O-O -O economics. Voodoo economics. This fits in once again with the time frame it was made. Anything we don't understand becomes evil while the norms aren't questioned on how people got the money and power they have until it's too late. The housekeeper finds that evil magic may be harming the young boy in the film and starts to put together counter spells and iconography to help keep him safe. When Sheen finds that she had put a small love spell together in hopes that he and the love interest got together, he brushed it off as nothing important. His belief in such things dismissed it completely. When everything in his life starts to spiral out of control and he finds strange items and totems under his son's bed, he gets angry and fires her. He immediately kicks her out of the house and tells her never to come back. We find that these are actually spells and items for protection. She was trying to use the practice of Santeria to protect the young boy fighting against the twisted and evil version of the same power. By the time the whole ordeal was over, it seems like he should have called her up to apologize, but sadly, we never see Carmen again. Sounds like something that would be hard to explain to your next employer when they asked why you left your last job. 
All in all, the film plays really well, the characters' interactions are great, the suspense is done super well, and you'll be on the edge of your seat for the majority of the film. Each twist and turn will make your heart race, and as mentioned before, the effects will keep you engaged with the movie until the credits finally roll. If you haven't seen this before, it's definitely worth seeking out. There are not many 80s films that are left to be discovered that can still pack a punch while you're watching it. If there is one thing this movie teaches, it's that money and power can corrupt a lot of people very easily, but that a caring family will be worth more than anything in life. Some things can easily slip through your fingers and you should cherish them every day. Even if you don't believe in Santeria, just hope that Santeria doesn't believe in you. Thank you for watching our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our Joe Blow Videos channel, tell your friends who like this sort of content, and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all our latest videos. We're an independent company and we appreciate your support. And if you have any suggestions for future episodes, please leave them in the comments below.